in the beginning of the loop, you can imagine that humanity is divided into two completely separate halves. The alien angel um, like technological colonizing half and the pre-technological uncivilized natural organic indigenous sort of like animal human half of humanity and the natural half the indigenous like completely pre-technological animal human half um like no clothes no nothing but is is living in complete balance with nature so you can imagine that that natural half the natural world in the beginning is like like a hermetically sealed um, terrarium or like a biodome or something that since it is in perfect balance it goes on it can go on basically forever but in the same at the same time it's um even though it's in perfect harmony and balance it's like life itself like contained in this self-contained bubble environment um it's not life in the way that we understand life to be in that uh, life and living is something that is always growing and changing because it never changes so even though it's alive it is always moving um, it's also sort of like in perpetual stasis because it's in perfect balance so you have these two halves the the and then you have the alien angel you know angels who kept not their first estate um colonizing half with like the technology to change the environment and basically contaminating the indigenous population with like technology but they're really just two halves of humanity and they're like two halves of a self-pollinating plant or something like that like the colonizers and the indigenous and it's not exactly like one side has all the intelligence and one side has none or one side has all the knowledge and the other has none but they're like two sides of humanity split into two different fields of knowledge. And like the alien um, colonizer, angel half, their field of knowledge is like technology, control of the environment. But the indigenous natural animal half um, or indigenous human half, their knowledge is like how to be human. It's like the one uh, colonizer half, they can't adapt to anything. They're always changing their environment um, because they can't change themselves at all. It's like they're perpetually in stasis, um, like spiritually or, or internally, so they always have to be changed. They like, can't sit still. They're always adapting the environment to themselves. It's like a restlessness. And the other one, the indigenous, is like completely adapted to the environment. They can change themselves to any environment, but they can't change the environment at all. And like from our perspective, neither one is quite right. 
because the envi- like even the indigenous, they're completely adapted to the environment in perfect balance, but there's no growth or change, and it's like a hostile environment. It's not actually like a perfect environment. It's like a hostile environment that isn't quite right, but they're perfectly in in like harmony with that hostile environment which it like isn't right and the other half um can't adapt to anything and they 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 can't like adapt themselves at all so they're both missing like what the other one has the colonizers have the technology to change the environment but can adapt themselves can't be comfortable so the angels aliens colonizers whatever coming into this closed system and like pollinating it but also you could say contaminating it um initiating like a change that can't be reversed like a chemical reaction it's like putting a reactant into uh some 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 other chemical to create a new chemical like a chemical reaction a solution between the two but it's also something that in normal terms with our normal material mind we can't really conceive of like what the synthesis of those two things would be because it's sort of like a synthesis like between moving and not moving or like between order and chaos which are like opposites to us it's like going left or right or something like that or like on an x-axis going like negative or positive when the synthesis is like moving in a different uh, like dimension like moving straight up somehow in both directions or, or something like that it's something we can't really conceive of or describe properly it is like this synthesis of moving and not moving or order and chaos and actually the order half would be the natural half because it's perfectly in balance and the chaos half would be the like spiritual angelic or alien colonizer half that's the the chaos that can't stop changing one can't stop staying the same one can't change one can't stop changing and um, neither side remembers where it came from. Where both think they came from the other. Like the colonizers think, uh, yeah, once in the distant past, we were indigenous people too, but we evolved up and went into space and discovered high technology and spent millions of years Uh, exploring and creating life through technology and genetic engineering and we became gods and the indigenous think that the colonizers are gods who created them so the colonizers think that they came from indigenous type people like natural animal man and the indigenous think that they came from the gods like the colonizers so they both think that they came from each other there's like this perpetual role reversal going on which is also you know like uh i'll get into it more later but we we see you see this like over and over again like in the in the greek mythology um, like the Giganto Mackie and the Titano Mackie or whatever they're called, like the Wars of the Gods, where first um, Kronos right overthrows uh, Uranus and the old like primeval gods, and then like 
the and then Zeus and the Olympian, they're the Titans. And then the Olympian, Zeus, and the other Olympi- Olympian gods, like the next generation overthrows um, Kronos and the Titans. And it's t- constantly this like mantle passing of like the who is the gods and who gets sent, you know, down to Tartarus or whatever. Or thrown down to the earth or or whatever happens. And it even goes further than that, because I think there was like a, a prophecy Zeus would have a child who would overtake him uh, by Metis. So he, like, when she gets pregnant, he swallows her. So he swallows up the whole, like, creation into himself or something. It's like a horror Boris type thing. Or something like that. You know. And then, um, like, the Argonautica, the Golden Fleece, it's like the the Colchians have the golden fleece and then it passes to the Greeks um, which is like this symbol of like ruling and you know the knowledge and whatever like the providence to rule over the realm and um, same kind of thing with like the Jews and the Gentiles and um It, it comes up in like every tradition. This constant like switching back and switching back and forth. It's like mantle switching. Um, so that's like the indigenous autochthonous um, natural man and the technological future alien angel colonizing half. And they both always think they came from each other. Um, and you can see, like, even in World War II, like a microcosm of the same process with the cargo cults, where the uncontacted indigenous tribes see um, aircraft and technology overhead or left behind or whatever, and they imitate it as religious paraphernalia of the gods. Like, whenever they see the... the colonizers you know it, it, it's almost like a, it's almost like we have these like morality plays embedded into the like subconscious fabric of reality so these stories uh, like the core stories of the loop these like mythological spiritual like deeply ingrained origin stories like play out in history and stuff over and over again The point we're at in history, seemingly, is also a a sign, you know, along with a million other things, that the loop point is coming back around. Um, The the sign, I mean, is that there are almost no indigenous people left. And uh, I, I don't mean like people with native ancestry. I mean like completely pre technological, totally uncontacted tribes living in stasis perpetually with nature there's only almost none of them left or maybe there are none left i don't know very few left because as, as soon as they are contacted at all they are contaminated just by seeing it just by like encountering it like 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 the cargo cults like that's all that's necessary like they're already contaminated just the any contact Um, so as soon as there are no uncontacted tribes or people left, the mixing of the colonizers and the indigenous is complete. So that's the loop point. Where it's like a pollinization or a chemical reaction in slow motion. Or obviously the whole alchemical metaphorical system applies. Like the whole Christian Rosencruz thing, Sov and Coagula, where humanity has been split into these two elements, totally separated and isolated and distilled to its most purified, potent form, and then recombined again. 
and we're almost at the point where they are completely recombined, where there's no unreacted material left. They're totally mingled, um, which would mean when we have a completely homogenous one world monoculture, that cycle is complete and the process would begin again with humanity splitting into these two elements again to restart the loop. Um, humanity would have to split into those two um, elements, those two halves again, with humanity either both, either or both being colonized, invaded by, you know, quote unquote aliens or um, apparently going out into space and invading, colonizing other primitive Earths, um, which are really two opposite reflections of the same thing. And um, they're both like losing, sacrificing your humanity, either by enslaving people or by being enslaved um, by either becoming demigods or worshipping demigods. And you could imagine like if humanity leaves or seemingly the planet to go colonize space or goes into virtual reality or you know however you want to look at it if all of you most all or most of humanity leaves and all of the technological ability and know-how leaves you could imagine like the people who were left behind um, basically devolving without any like culture being totally isolated and losing all the technological knowledge. You could imagine, you know, most some most or some of humanity leaving and those who are left behind on the earth devolving into a completely um, almost animal uh, human state, like like reverting to a completely pre technological state to um, restart this loop again in whatever the, the time periods are really uh, irrelevant. You could say millions of years in between, but it's really all like you go into some sort of subjective time dilation uh, like collective subconscious dream space where there's no way really to say how much real time is elapsing and you know that could really apply to that could really always apply also um, but you could imagine too even even if you do take like the actual tin can rocket ship model um but it's more like, you know, you take a rocket, you fly up in a rocket ship or something, and when you get away from the Earth, instead of, like, physically traveling in space, it's like you leave the consensus reality, thought reality tree of humanity, and you go out into, like, untethered subconscious space, and it's more like you go up and you come back down like when you go high enough up that you sort of detach from your consensus reality with the rest of humanity it's like all these other alternate earths like beads of water on a sheet of wax paper or something or all these other little puddles and you come down to one that you don't know which one you left from it's just like an infinite like fractal grid of earths and you come back down to another one and thinking that you went out into space or something when you're, you're just going off into like outer darkness like 
like detached uh, consciousness, untethered solipsistic, like kind of come back down into some past or alternate Earth or Puddle Earth or whatever. Which I think is what happens in like Planet of the Apes, I'm not sure. Maybe I'll try to find a clip of it. I think that's what happens in Planet of the Apes, right? Like they think they're going out into space, like traveling to some other planet, but they're really coming back to like Earth somehow. Like a I guess it is in the future, but you know, it's the same idea of this like big, big, one way or another, the, the loop is recreated. Or, you know, humanity is all materially destroyed or something, going into virtual reality, stasis, storage, and the Earth regenerates, like, in all these mythological traditions, like the Earth-born autochthonous people that are just born from the Earth, like, printed out of the Earth, basically. And when the people come back in a million years or whatever, like I said, it's all just sort of subjective relative time the thing repeats like they've you've been out in space developing high technology for millions of years becoming gods with genetic engineering and, and whatnot and you come back again to earth uh to these um the whole thing repeats again with the indigenous pre-technological people and the like fallen angel alien interloper colonizers to start the next cycle of the chemical reaction again. And even, um, you know, the Lord creating Eve out of one of Adam's ribs. In the second creation, he creates Adam from the dust of the ground and then he creates Eve he takes causes a, a deep sleep to fall upon him while, while he slept he took one of his ribs and from that rib the Lord had taken from the man he made a woman and brought her to him um, you could even in like a science fiction sort of interpolation of the story you could say Adam was also made from Adam's rib, or the dust of the ground. Like you could imagine in the science fiction interpolation, like androgynous angels, aliens that are so far removed, millions of years from humankind, so far removed to have forgotten about sex, and they, uh, you know, find just the bones of extinct humanity in like a science experiment they recreate man like 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 scientists now trying to revive um woolly mammoths or saber-toothed tigers or something like that like they come back to earth millions of years later when humanity is extinct and from the bones recreate adam from adam's rib also and um but what always happens is it's always incomplete DNA, so they have to add some of their own DNA to fill in the gaps in the um, degraded DNA. So they have to put their own blood into the mix of the bones that they find in the earth to recreate Adam. And they're so removed from being human and so androgynous, sexless, and sterile that um, it takes them a while to realize uh, that it's not good for man to be alone. And, you know, they insert their own DNA, create women, then learn about sex from the people, and then corrupt themselves, contaminate their own experiment, um, you know, become male or enter the experiment. Um, they violate the prime directive or whatever to have sex like human sex life interaction um, which you know it's another way of like restarting the whole loop again and the, the recreating humanity from 
the bones and like mixed with the blood or whatever is a recurring thing um, like in the Greek flood myth Deucalion is the survivor of the flood and he's the son of Prometheus and I don't want to get into a huge aside but I think you could parallel Adam with Prometheus it's never like a one to one match up of the characters but like the symbols the uncon like subconscious like uh spiritual type like symbolism always matches up you could sort of match up prometheus would match up to like adam and the serpent together and deucalion is prometheus's son so he would be like noah but he's also sort of like cain um and it's even similar to Noah, it says his name means sweet new wine. Like the first thing Noah does when he lands is to plant a vineyard and get shit faced. And sailor, seaman, fisher. Um, his wife is Pyrrha, like Pyra, which is like Pyro, you know, Pyromania, whatever. Pyrotechnics means fire who is the daughter of Pandora. The flood in the time of Deucalion was caused by the anger of Zeus, ignited by the hubris of Lysan, Lycaon, and his sons. According to the story, King Lycan of Arcadia had sacrificed a boy to Zeus, who, appalled by this offering, decided to put an end to the Bronze Age by unleashing a deluge. So basically it's due to human sacrifice, which is, you know, similar to, like, they're totally corrupt, their thoughts are of uh, wickedness, violence, their thoughts are of evil continuously. <clears throat> Deucalion, with the aid of his father Prometheus, was saved from this deluge by building a chest. His wife, Pyra. Right, and Pyra is the daughter of Pandora, as in Pandora's box. So she's similar to like Eve tempted by the serpent. And I don't know if it says it, if I can find it here. So his wife, Pyra, is the daughter of Epimetheus and Pandora. And Pandora was, you know, like Pandora's box was created by Hephaestus. Like the god, the blacksmith to the gods, Vulcan, Hephaestus. Uh, like as a punishment, Epimetheus is Prometheus's brother. Uh, afterthought. Pandora is created basically as like a robot woman. He's created like by Hephaestus, the technological god to as like a curse on mankind to tempt them. So Deucalion is like Noah but also like Cain. And I say, yeah, it's like the Noah story, but he's also like Cain. He's the son of Prometheus, which like I said, Prometheus can be like Adam and the serpent. Deucalion, who first founded cities like Cain. Cain built the first cities. Deucalion, who first founded cities and reared temples to the immortal gods, like founds pagan worship to the gods and first ruled over men. That's Deucalion. It's the same as Cain. Deucalion first founded cities, reared temples to the immortal gods, and first ruled over men. Son of Prometheus. And the reason I say Prometheus is like Adam and the serpent in a way, it's sort of like, like I said that 
the alien colonizers coming down to Earth like Genesis 6, you know. Um, you could, um, that's, that could be like Adam being, and Eve being cast out of the garden into the world, um, the natural world. And you could also look like being tempted by the serpent. It has a lot of connotations, obviously, uh, sexual is one of them, but another one is like being tempted into just the material nature like a snake that sheds its skin over and over again. It's like entering into material nature where you are going to change bodies or skins again and again. Even either in, you know, the classic like reincarnation uh, sense, but even without that, there's just the genetic sense. Like from that first man perspective, like you have kids who have kids who have kids who have kids so you still so you live on that way genetically so being tempted by the serpent is being tempted into that like material changing skins uh nature where you go from skin to skin to skin like either uh spiritual or genetic reincarnation and yeah like i said like aliens whatever creating adam from adam's rib people from the bones and their own blood um, Deucalion and Pyra uh, how to repopulate the earth after the flood he was told to cover your head and throw the bones of your mother behind your shoulder Deucalion and Pyra understood that mother was Gaia the mother of all living things and the bones to be rocks they threw the rocks behind their shoulders and the stones formed people Pyra's became women Deucalion's became men so the, the bones again. And then if you look at like uh, Quetzalcoatl, um, you know, Quetzalcoatl and his twin brother Zalatl, the evening star, Venus. Like Quetzalcoatl's the morning star, his twin brother's the evening star. And it's sort of like uh, Lucifer and Jesus also like Lucifer means Venus. But that can be like the 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 falling part. Oh, um, oh, Lucifer, how you have fallen! Like fa the fall of um, the fallen angels. That's like the evening star half, and Jesus being the bright and morning star, like also Venus. But it's the twin of like the rising last man. Um, so there's like the fall or the descent, the search and the ascent. Um, it's like these three phases. Um, the fall being like Adam, Lucifer, um, the search or, you know, when you're down on earth or un in the underground or whatever in the underworld is like humanity. Um, and then the ascent is like Christ. And it's like the Lucifer and Jesus are like both Venus, but like opposite aspects, like no faith falling and faith ascending the evening star and the morning star. Um, symbol of death and resurrection, but yeah, okay, the reason I pulled it up was um, in the Quetzalcoatl myth, Often our current time was considered the fifth sun, the previous four having been destroyed by flood, fire, and the like. Quetzalcoatl went to Mictlan, the underworld, and created fifth world mankind from the bones of the previous races with the help of Siwakotl, using his own blood from a wound he inflicted on his earlobes, calves, tongue, and penis to imbue the bones with new life. So... Uh, Quetzalcoatl, just like Deucalion, and just like in the second Genesis story, humanity is uh, created from the bones of the previous humanity and with his blood. Um, there's also, it's said that 
Quetzalcoatl was coerced into becoming drunk, cavorting with his older sister, a celibate priestess, and re rejecting, neglecting his religious duties. Many academics conclude this passage implies incest. The next morning, Quetzalcoatl, feeling shame and regret, had his servants build him a stone chest, adorn him in turquoise, and then laying in the chest, set himself on fire. His ashes rose into the sky, and his heart followed, becoming the morning star. So, um... It's like the phoenix, obviously, but it's it's also like the fall is the sexual temptation again, which again is like symbolic for like a lot of things, like not just sex, but it's like wanting to be God, the progenitor of like wanting like, well, what if I was God? What if I was the creator and creating people and uh, something I can't explain all of it right now. It won't be too far astray, but they're all a similar sort of story. The bones of the previous loop of humanity imbued with like the blood of the angel, alien, gods. And in Atrahasis, which is like Utnapishtim, it's like the Sumerian, Mesopotamian flood story like related to Gilgamesh and these other stories, they make mankind by, basically if you go like halfway down, then one god should be slaughtered, and the gods can be purified by immersion. Nintu shall mix clay with his flesh and his blood. Then a god and a man will be mixed together in clay. Let us hear the drumbeat forever after. It's like the heartbeat or something like that. Let a ghost come into existence from the god's flesh. Um, it's like the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. They slay the god. It's also like that movie Prometheus or whatever. They slay the god to create man. And it's like making man from dust and the blood. If you mix all the stories together, mix together clay and the slay the god and mix his blood to create man. Let a ghost come into existence from the God's flesh. It's like the Holy Ghost. Let her proclaim it as his living sign. And let the ghost exist so as not to forget the slain God. It's like Christ. You know, the awareness of like what happened and where he came from. When he dies, the Holy Ghost comes to remind you all the time. Let the ghost exist so as not to forget the slain god. And they answered yes in the assembly. The great Anunnaki was sign of fates. And there being the two halves of humanity, the natural indigenous um, pre- technology, pre-agriculture half, and the alien angel, like, higher intelli high intelligence technological colonizer half. You could look at the first creation, Genesis 1, as that perpetual balance, stasis world with the natural man, where Verse 26, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, to rule over the fish of the seas and the birds of the air, over the livestock, and over all the earth itself, and every creature that crawls upon it. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and every creature that crawls upon the earth. So basically he, there, there, there's no first he created Adam and then put him to sleep and took his rib and there's no garden, there's no none of that. It's just he creates them right along with the animals. Male and female he cre created, created he them. And he says, and there's also none of this like, don't eat from the tree of knowledge and be tempted by the serpent and all this like, don't have like sex and reproduce. Like that, like in, 
you know, that's they get thrown out of the garden, and then he, I have made man, a man in my own image. Like, he even says it like he's like God, Adam. But there's none of that don't have sex, don't reproduce, don't eat from the tree. It's just, boom, they pop up right with the animals. Male and, they're like animal humans, like natural humans. Male and female created them, and he says, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, like just like the animals. Be, be fruitful and multiply, and multiply on the face of the earth. So that 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 first creation is like the natural half of humanity in the beginning of the loop, and then the second creation in Genesis two. Um, if you go down to verse five, like now no shrub of the field had yet appeared on the earth, nor had any plant of the field sprouted, for the Lord God had not yet set rain upon the earth, and there was no man to cultivate the ground, but springs welled up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. But that no plant of the field had not sprouted, it's like there was no agriculture, like things just grew by themselves, like hunter-gatherer, it wasn't agriculture. And there was no man to cultivate the ground. Like, it doesn't say there was no man, but there's just this natural man who doesn't cultivate the ground, like, doesn't have agriculture. But springs welled up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Like, it all works by itself. It's like this perpetual balance terrarium system. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed the breath of life into his nostrils, and the man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east where he placed the man he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God gave growth to every tree that is pleasing to the eye and good for food. And in the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's like the tree of life going up and the tree of knowledge of good and evil going down. And this man, this is like the alien angel higher uh, realm man. Um, this man, he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and became a living soul. It's like different than the natural man created in Genesis 1, who's just pop up with the animals. Male and female, he created them. He said, it would be fruitful, multiply. That, that's not what he said to Adam and Eve. But, you know the story, they eat from, they're tempted, Eve's tempted, Adam's tempted, they eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and they get cast out of the garden. But first, it like this 321, the Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. You could look at this um, as literal like he like gave them material bodies and cast them out of the garden like he gave them skins garments animal skins and his wife like put them in animal bodies material bodies genesis 3 2 2 um and the Lord said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. Now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. So it's like you could think of it as there they have eating from the tree of knowledge. Like they've been the serpent. Like I said, they've been going down into material nature. They've been go. They've contaminated the terrarium. They've been going down and mixing with the material man, and they're sort of like children, like just learning about good and evil. But they've gone down into the material world, so now they must be made mortal. Like they can't be allowed to also live forever as like children and going down into material nature because you can if you think of a, as an analogy if you think of like time is money if you imagine a teenager coming to know good and evil like imagine a teenager like a, a 16 year old just has unlimited money like it would be catastrophic because they they don't know uh the different they don't know good and evil yet they're they're like kids they're teenagers 
and they would get into drugs or buy a Ferrari and crash it and kill someone. And like, you can just imagine, like you can't let a young teenager have unlimited money. And it's the same thing with time. Like now that they're going into material nature, they can't be allowed to have unlimited time. It's the same analogy because like, if you have unlimited time, you have unlimited money and resources if you're immortal. You have time to figure out anything, any way to make money. So limitations have to be set for everyone's safety, for their own safety and safe development. It's like setting curfews or something on a teenager. Um, so yeah, if you think of time as money, that like, okay, now we have to, they can't live forever. They have to put a um, limitation on their lives they have to become mortal now that they're going down into material nature be put in animal skins like material bodies and then Cain um, like Cain when he rises up and slays Abel am I my brother's keeper and then so he's cast out um, from everyone else. I will be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Whoever finds me will kill me. Not so, replied the Lord. If anyone slays Cain, then Cain will be avenged. Cain will be avenged sevenfold. And the Lord placed a mark on Cain so that no one who found him would kill him. So Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. It's also like unaware Nod, like sleep unawareness and Cain had relations with his wife and she conceived and gave birth to Enoch this isn't the other Enoch like seventh from Adam that is taken up uh, with the Lord but this is the other Enoch and Cain had relations with his wife and she conceived and gave birth to Enoch then Cain built a city and named it after his son Enoch Okay, so you have to ask yourself, okay, so there's Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel. So who, who there were, like I said, okay, these people have to already be here. The Genesis 1, like the natural indigenous people. It's like these are like the colonizers coming down, like aliens, angels, whatever, into the material world that's already filled with people. Um like basically contaminating them colonizing the world They're, they are like the fallen angels basically from Genesis 6 is actually you know Adam and Cain and, and whatnot. these are like the same as the angels coming down in Genesis 6 or else you have to say Cain okay Cain built a city okay there's four people in the whole world like who is he building a city for and ruling over there, there's no people. There have to be other people, which are like these natural people that he's like, like Island of Dr. Moreau or um, Apocalypse Now or, yeah, I don't know. There's a million like, like, you know, stories you could reference where basically someone with high technology goes and is going to rule over these indigenous people like as a god, okay? Like little g gods ruling over the people. Just so basically Genesis 6 this is actually again this is like one way to look at it I'm not saying this is how it is this is one way to look at it that this is um, those fallen angels it is like Adam Cain and his offspring which is like the angelic people coming down to the natural animal people um now when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them, that's like the first creation. Be fruitful and multiply. It creates them just like with the animals. Uh, on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and they took as wives whomever they choose. So the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with man forever, for he is mortal. His days shall be 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and afterward as well, when the sons of God had relations with the daughters of men, and they bore them children who became the mighty men of old, men of renown. 
Then the Lord saw that wickedness of man was great upon the earth and that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was altogether evil all the time. So the Lord regretted that he had man, made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the earth, every man and beast and crawling creature, for I am grieved that I have made them. This is like, uh, basically what I'm saying is, yeah, these Nephilim are, it's like Adam and Cain going out. You know, there has to be people there for Cain to build a city and rule over people. There can't, there has to be people. There has to be someone else there for him to build a city and bring people over into and rule over. Jude. 1, six And the angels who did not keep their positions of authority but abandoned their proper dwelling, like, you know, come at, they're supposed to be just observing or, or whatever, like they come into the terrarium where they weren't supposed to abandon their proper dwelling. These he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for, for judgment on the great day. And, you know, in prisons of darkness, he cast them into... Tartarus, another translation, I remind you of the angels who did not stay within the limits of their authority. They did not stay, the, the Berean is probably the closest, who did not stay within their own domain, domain, which would be like the garden, like their own little bubble, but abandoned their proper dwelling. For the, these he kept in eternal chains under darkness, bound for that great day. It also says bound in Tartarus, which is like the Greek world word for the underworld. Um, place of punishment under the earth, the underworld, the netherworld. But something else interesting I, I came upon in the Mesopotamian, um, Sumerian, you know, Miss Gilgamesh and all that. Uh, in like the as it says earth a name for the underworld i said excuse me so it's interesting like tartarus earth is a name for the underworld originally so you, you can imagine it, the fallen angels being cast down to the underworld it could be cast down to earth like being a mortal person and yet bound in darkness is like bound in ignorance like you're cut off from that higher spiritual aspect and also um, you could look at basically Adam and Lucifer as the same things, or the fall of man, and um, the fallen angels actually being the same thing as like in Matthew 18, 10, when Jesus says, see that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. Or the Berean, do not look down on these little ones, for I tell you their angels in heaven always or continually behold the face of my father so it, like it's not really mentioned anywhere else in the bible but there's like a clear implication that angels aren't completely separate from humans but it's like okay so they're on the earth as a human but they also have a an angel in heaven it's like they're still connected to their like heavenly counterpart Whereas the fallen angels are cut off, like in Tartarus, from their higher heavenly counterpart. Whereas, you know, innocents and babies, innocent people, or, you know, if you are born again, you might be not bound in darkness. You're, like, saved and raised up. You might have... Uh, be reconnected with that angel in heaven or like your higher spiritual counterpart 
So it, it, you could look at it as like your real self is like not in here. It's like a, this is like a system and your material body is like, I don't want to say like a clone body, but it's like an avatar made for you, like in this system. Like the Lord God made garments of, and gave them animal skins and cast them out of the garden. It's like you got put into an animal body, this like avatar for you and cut off from the higher spiritual body. And just one more verse about it, but 1 Corinthians 15, 35 through like 48. <clears throat> And what you sow, well, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come? You fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And what you sow is not the body that will be, but just a seed, perhaps of wheat or something else. But God gives it a body as he has designed. And to each kind of seed, he gives its own body. Uh, not all flesh is the same. Men have one kind of flesh, animals have another, birds another, and fish another. There are also heavenly bodies and earthly bodies. I'm like skipping all the way down to the bottom. There's a natural body. There is also a spiritual body. It is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam, a life-giving spirit. The spiritual, however, was not first, but the natural, and then the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth. The second man from heaven. And this... Genesis 6, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and they took as wives whomever they choose. This is like um, an event, like an archetypical event that replays in history over and over again. And it loops over and over again. Um like the Roman rape of the Sabines is the same thing, which is in the book of Jasher as Chittim and Tubal. Yeah, and the children of Tubal dwelt in Toscana and their boundaries reached the river Tiber, which is like the Tiber. And the children of Tubal built a city in Tuscanon, and they called the name Sabina. After the son, after the name of Sabina, son of Tubal, their father, and they dwelt there unto this day. So Tubal, also you know it's like Tubal Cain, but Tubal are like the Sabines, and Chittim is like Rome. And at that time, the children of Tubal swore to the children of Chittim, saying, You shall not intermarry among us, and no man shall give his daughter to any of the sons of Chittim, for all the daughters of Tubal were in those days fair. For no women were then found in the whole earth, so fair as the daughters of Tubal. And all who delighted in the beauty of women went to the daughters of Tubal and took wives from them. And the sons of men, kings and princes, who greatly delighted in the beauty of women, took wives in those days from the daughters of Tubal. But basically, the Sabines or Tubal won't give them any wives. So, like down at verse 9, in the days of the harvest, the children of Tubal went out into their fields to get their harvest. When the men of Chittim assembled and went to the city of Sabina, each man took a woman from the daughters of Tubal and they came to their cities. So basically, they go steal their women, you know, and they take wives, whoever they choose. And the children of Tubal heard of it and went to make war with them. They could not prevail over them. For the mountain was exceedingly high. Blah, blah, blah. They went home and returned to their land. They hired 10,000 men. They come back to fight again. And the children of Tubal went to war with the children of Chittim to destroy their land and distress them. And basically they're going to win, which would be like the natives overcoming Rome. But they lift up the children that they've had with the women and, and say, hey, are you going to kill us? You know, we have your grandchildren in here. So they give up and go away.
which is the same story as the rape of the Sabines, the Romans who um, have a festival, they, they invite the native people, the Sabines, and then they steal all their women. They, just like Genesis 6, they take wives, whoever they choose. They just steal them. It's called the rape of the Sabines. And again, the reason they have to steal the wives is because It was uh, the rape of the Sabines perpetrated by Romulus and his predominantly male followers. It is said that after the foundation of the city, the population consisted solely of Latins and other Italian people, in, in particular male bandits. So they're bandits. That's who the you know founders of Rome are. And there's no women there. They don't have any of their own women. They're they're bandits. Um, they're come, they're like bullies, you know, like they come to conquer and steal male bandits. And, um, like going back to Genesis 6, taking wives from whoever they choose, it, it goes back to like the idea of wanting to like control other people and dominate material nature and like rule over other people. Um, but this story is like pretty much universal. Also similar to the Genesis 6 story is in Plato, Plato's Critias. When he's talking about Atlantis and Poseidon, receiving for his lot the island of Atlantis, begat children by a mortal woman, and settled them in a part of the island which I will proceed to describe. You don't have to read the whole thing. But basically, they, Poseidon falls in love with a mortal woman and had intercourse with her, breaking the ground and closed the hill in which she dwelt all around. It describes the island of Atlantis and his sons basically rule over Atlantis which is which is like ruling over um, the whole world and similarly like the you know you have Genesis 6 the Roman rape of the Sabines and also like the colonial period with bandits like ha taking wives whoever they choose from the indigenous people is like a thing that replays over and over again the placage system colonial system developed from the predominance of men among early colonial populations who took women as consorts from Native Americans, free women of color, and enslaved Africans. In this period, there was a shortage of European women as the colonies were dominated in the early day by male explorers and colonists. That's just like the new nice term for like, you know, in Rome, they just say they're bandits. But now, you know, in like more modern days in our history, they're explorers and colonists. But it's all the same, like, looping story over and over again. Also, the, the whole story, especially, like, I'm just using the Sumerian Mesopotamian one here, Atrahasis, when they create man, it also parallels now like the creation of AI where people don't want to do the work so they want to create you can see into the future like they're going to want to create AI and robots to do the work for them it, when the gods instead of man did the work bore the loads the gods load was too great the work too hard the trouble too much the great Anunnaki made the Ajiji carry the workload sevenfold Anu, their father, was king, their counselor, warrior, Alil. Their chamberlain was Ninurta, the canal controller, Anugi. 
it's also like they have to it also sounds like after a reset like if you go down to the bottom made the Ajiji bear the workload the gods had to dig out canals had to clear channels the lifelines of the land the Ajiji had to, it's like we don't we don't feel like doing this so they it's like basically it parallels creating AI to do all this work for them possibly after a catastrophe and but they basically self-replicate and I don't have clips for all of it but they're like oh this is out of control <laughs> there's there's too many <laughs> there's basically too many of the humans and you can imagine it's like every movie like where AI gets out of control and they're like troubling the gods quote unquote and they basically invent death and disease and like the lifespan um, and like infect the humans with them to try and get it out of control because they're just breeding out of control like they created them and then they just get totally out of control like a algae bloom or, or something like that and it's also like if you yeah, and they have to mix their blood of a god with clay. It's like mixing their DNA and their awareness to give it life or true sentience in order to, like, work properly. They have to, like, mix their DNA or part of their consciousness with mineral consciousness. Um... And it, it, it going in the Genesis 6 direction, you can even imagine, like, people now that are falling in love with chatbots and people that, like, want to have sex with robots. That at a certain point, in order to make it real, you have, where they have to either basically meld the two together in some way to make it real. Like, either through a neural, Neuralink type process uh, where they can let, like splice off part of their awareness and genetics and give it to the AI or enter into a virtual reality where they can interact together. But either way, it's like the same thing of being cut off from part of your awareness, sacrificing the God in order to make like the AI real. And the gen in the Genesis 6 version, it's like because people literally w want to have sex with robots. And, and computers and fall in love with them. Also in terms of the um, like parallels with the AI and robot creation, we now have, uh, we can see like a real world parallel or a real world example of like the wheats and the tares and what a lot of these stories could mean like literally physically manifesting technologically um again like coming up to the loop point where where if you imagine in the past it, it would be hard to imagine literally like what that would actually mean like the wheats and the tares. There's people with, you know, uh, the enemy, we sowed good seed, but the enemy went amongst you and sowed bad seed that looks like you, but it's, you know, just chaff to be burned, like, or like empty vessels, vessels of destruction or whatever, like NPCs or whatever you want to call them, like, but we're at a point now where that can actually be understood uh, literally like we have chatbots already now that can trick people either over text phone calls or Instagram videos etc and the you know maybe wouldn't be able to trick you but you would need to be able to be in contact with them on a more intimate level like but you could be tricked easily as far as like customer service or like 90% of just surface level interactions 
because in order to determine that it doesn't have like sentience you would have to enter into a more intimate um, relationship or conversation I don't mean sex but I just mean like talking about things um, beyond like mechanical material concerns and try to have like a emotional connection with them but anyway for most purposes most of the time they could already trick most people with the like chatbot dialogue part and you know the main purpose of that of bots is to influence or control the real humans by overwhelming and outnumbering them and steering them in that way like one of the psychological tests like well-known psychological tests where they fill a room with plants confederates that are all in on the experiment and like where there's like parallel lines or whatever that aren't parallel they ask them if they're parallel or, or not and they're clearly not or whatever they'll have all the plants who are in on the in on the experiment give the wrong answer and then the real people will give the wrong answer also just to fit in like so you can use you know npcs chat bots whatever like wheats and tares like you overwhelm the real humans in order to steer reality and like steer the real humans um and we can see we've already crossed that bot army machine people fake people line in this timeline which illustrates to us what happened in the past that is the value of the loop then the the good part of the nature of it is that it's embedded in it is that the present explains the future and therefore the past and allows you even without direct memory to discern what your situation is and what happened it's like an inescapable artifact in the system a feature of the system so you can never really forget or get completely lost because all your old memories are literally splayed out all over reality, projected out on the walls of the video drone for everyone to see. So that, that, that's one like benefit of the loop is it, it's always like explaining what happened and how, how you got to the current point. It's all like the whole thing is always embedded in every, every step of the way. And even like all these different um, I was going to go into the Dogon stuff too because that's like relevant also but I don't want to go too many different ways but um, all the different mythologies and stuff it's sort of like you know Osiris is murdered by Set and his 14 pieces are cut up and scattered all over the world it's like what happened the, the fundamental story of our situation is like split up all over the world and scattered everywhere in all the like material mythologies even like uh, I don't know if, I'm not going to pull it up right now but when Jesus takes the tribute from the fish's mouth like they're going into the city into the temple and they're like oh we're going to cry tribute from you he's like go down to the to the sea and pull up a fish and have a coin in its mouth like taking the tribute out of the fish's mouth the sea represents the material world and you have like Dagon the Dagon the fish headed god and all that type of stuff and I think it's basically the tribute from the fish's mouth part of it. it's like all these like I guess you'd call them pagan um mythologies or whatever all these stories from all around the world actually all piece together to remind you of like the true story which is not really like a material thing it's beyond that it's like a spiritual thing so it's like the whole material world is like a big like morality play almost on some deeper level to like trigger like a subconscious remembering of what it's all actually about 